Wow, that, that really took some doing. That took me about two hours. I'm glad I stopped taping. Uh, hopefully, you guys are just as dedicated as I am to this craft and uh, are willing to put in the time and hard work like I am every time I mix that glaze up. Two hours. It's a good workout. So, uh, here we are. This stuff is nice and everything's off the bottom. It's kind of liquidy. It's formulated for brushing, but I don't want to brush all the way down. It's going to be like really hard to brush all the way in there. So I'm going to try pouring into here, swirling this around as much as I can. And then I'm going to dump it upside down, not over there, but into this container so that I don't waste my glaze. All right. So we're going to give this a shot and see how it works out. Like I said, this is a brushing glaze, but we're going to see what happens. And I can always probably touch up at the top with the brush to blend everything in. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Oh, I'm going to dump a whole bunch in there. And if it's watertight, that's going to tell me this is all good. So it's all filled up. And I'm just going to dump it out and try and dump it. You know, everywhere I see bare clay on the inside. And, oh, there's a little bit I can't get out. Oh, oh no, this is going to work out okay. And this is a choice I can make. I can either, if I want it really clean, you see how I got some on the outside. And if I want a big contrast, I'm going to be able to wipe this off and then I can stain on the outside. So it doesn't really matter which one of these processes you do first, inside or outside. Uh, you'll get the hang of it. You'll figure out what you like to do better. Um, but that worked out pretty well. So I'm just gonna kind of wipe off this excess glaze right now, wring out my sponge and my clean rinse water and just wipe that off the edge. If I would have wanted that as an aesthetic feature over top of my stain, it would have been nice to have done that inside secondly, and then I would have some nice drips over top of the stain. But, say la vie. Now, moving on to my stain, you can see that this is really separated out, okay? And I'm going to need to stir that up with my stirring utensil. One reason why I like to use the clear glaze first is if I get a little bit of that clear glaze into this wash, it's not going to make too much of a difference. But if I get the wash into the clear glaze, that clear glaze is not going to be clear anymore. It's going to be tainted. Uh, so this, if I'm working over a period of time, this, this stain, I need to probably keep a stirring utensil in there and every, you know, 10 minutes or so, five, every five minutes, I probably need to give it a quick stir because this stuff settles out quickly. But unlike the, the glaze, it will mix in and you can look at the bottom if you have a clear container, it mixes in very, very quickly. Uh, very easily. So that is the nice thing about it. The, the clear glaze, this will stay suspended. I don't know for how long. You'll have to check it. But it's going to stay suspended in that matrix for longer than the, um, the wash. Okay? Make sure you keep the right cover on because you don't want to uh, mix the covers because you don't want to contaminate. Got my separate little wash there and I'm just going to take let's see I'll get this brush out of here Ooh, you see how liquidy that is if I hold it over the container it's going to really help things out I'm just going to brush it I can brush it on the bottom I have to wipe it off the bottom. No glaze on the bottom, even the stain. The stain will, you'll see when I wipe it off, it will stain the bottom. 
Uh, you can't get it all off, but you'll get enough off to where it's not going to stick to anything. So I'm just brushing this on kind of randomly without care. What I'm really looking to do is I really want to make sure that I don't have, I don't know if you can see any little white spots in this fine texture. I don't want to see any of those. So I just want to make sure that those recessed areas are filled in as best as possible. I'm going to go over this whole piece and I'll come back to you. So my piece is all nice and stained. Some places it's thicker. Some places I just kind of skimmed off the, from the top and it's really thin. And I'm just curious to see what kind of difference that's going to make in the finished product. When this is fired, it's probably not going to be this red. It's going to be more of a brown red. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red iron rinsing water, wring out my sponge really well, and then really wipe this and keep on rinsing out my sponge. And you'll see when I get to some of these more textural areas that it's really going to have a big effect. So you see how much you can see that texture now? It's really accentuating texture. And that's why I'm using this stain on the outside that's been textured prior to disking. Wiping off the bottom, of course. No stain, no glaze on the bottom. I don't want it to get stuck. And look, look at how nice my name com comes out. So that tells you uh, how well this works in bringing out texture. So really just kind of wipe this down till you're to your heart's content. You can leave some areas thicker, some thinner, see what happens. Um, Whoa. And then the next step is to bring this into the college, not into, but outside the college, and put it on the Cone 6 glaze cart that's located under the first story, first portal currently. That may change if this is a different class, but currently that's where it's at. Okay, so that's about it. Have fun wiping your bottom.